Hello and welcome in to Catamount Football Weekly as we talk Western Carolina Catamount Football with head coach Mark Spear. I'm Daniel Hooker and coach will jump right in obviously wide out in the Wii. It was a big win for Western Carolina opening up the home portion of the schedule against Gardner Webb, a big 44-14 victory. Well it was a uh... An exciting day to say to say the least, but uh, you know, happy number one to come out with a win, and to do it in such fashion, you know, is a great way to uh, start out the 2016 campaign at home, and and the run through our FCS schedule, you know, opened up with an FBS loss against East Carolina. It's always nice to uh, play number one at home, and then beat a, a conference uh, rival, you know, Big South uh, team there. And uh, so it was a great way to get it started. I thought, uh, you know, it was a little, uh, a lot of discipline, little issues there in the first half. We had to get cleaned up. A lot of times we were killing ourselves, shooting ourselves in the foot. But uh, proud of the way the guys uh, got their composure there at halftime and came out and, and uh, did what we needed to do to go get the victory. Let's talk about Tyree Adams, coach, led your offense to 690 yards of total offense, 510 on his own, 427 passing, 83 on the ground, five touchdown passes, all added up to Offensive Player of the Week in the conference and a National Freshman of the Week. Well, not a bad day for a redshirt freshman, but uh, starting his second game. But you know, Tyree is, is a special young man. Um, he's, he's got a lot of athletic ability. Um, but the, the biggest thing is his composure. That was going to be the big question uh, coming into this season was what kind of composure, decision-making would he have. And uh, after the first two games, I mean, the, the future's bright with, with Tyree. He, uh, he, he makes great reads. He doesn't let the rush affect him. You know, we were wondering early on would he be a guy that as soon as he felt pressure was going to try to break contain and, and scramble out of the pocket, but he does a great job working the pocket with his feet and uh, as he looks down the field to uh, continue to read his keys. And then just in the running game, when things break down or in our zone uh, keep uh, scheme, which is an option scheme, uh, where a quarterback has to read the defenders, he, he does a great job. He's not let the moment get bigger uh, than it is. So I'm awful proud of uh, what Tyree's done his first two games and certainly hope that trend continues. Well, he's got some good offensive weapons to, to deal with, Coach. Obviously, Spearman Robinson, career-high 13 catches, over 150 yards receiving. You talk about Jordan Mathis going over 100 yards receiving. And, of course, Dietrez Newsom quietly with over 140 yards rushing and two scores, one through the air and one on the ground. Well, we, we certainly have some weapons on offense. And one of the the key things that happened last Saturday, we were able to vertically throw the ball down the field. Um, you know, a lot of our, our plays in the past have been the bubbles and the screens and the, and the short throws that, uh, you know, our receivers made somebody miss and, and uh, then, then they were off to the races. But uh, I think Tyree's got a very nice touch on the deep ball. Um, and so we were able to vertically hurt Gardner Webb down the field, who, you know, last year was number 13th defense in the nation and had a lot of players back, and, and they were quality teams. So that was that was huge uh, for us to be able to prove that we could do that, and we're going to continue to take our shots down the field, and uh, hopefully that opens up the run game. And now you got to defend a, a vertical field as well as a running quarterback and and a. Uh, you know, a great running back like Detrez Newsom. So uh, that was a big goal of ours coming into the preseason was being able to vertically threat people, and, and we, we did a nice job of that last Saturday. All the offense from that ball game, Coach, you cannot overlook what the defense did. The adjustments made at halftime. Fred Payne leading the way, career-high 15 to high tackles. and Can't overlook what they did, obviously holding Gardner-Webb to 130-some yards of offense in the second half and pitching a shutout after intermission. Well, I was awful proud of our defense. And, uh, you know, when you have a high-powered offense, a lot of times they get all the press and the ink. But, uh, you know, we struggled uh, ourselves offensively. We kept shooting ourselves in the foot. We would drive, drive down the field and get uh, just silly penalties, silly mistakes that uh, we can't make if we're going to go try to win a Southern Conference championship. And our defense just kept give, giving the offense the ball back. And, uh, you know, then we got some things squared away. And 
uh, for the second half in, in that defense, quietly just went about their business and and uh, sh you know shut out a, a team that uh, was high, scored 31 points uh, a week ago and had a national player of the year in their quarterback, or national player of the week uh, in their quarterback from week one. So he's a good football player, and they've got a good offense, and so. That was big for our defense to have a day like that, to, uh, to give them a lot of confidence. And it was a good team win. That's what I told them after the game. It took the off, you know, the offense getting that ball and, and going down and scoring points, but it also took uh, times when the offense was struggling or sputtering or shooting themselves in the foot that that defense didn't panic and just kept getting the offense the ball back. So a big win for Western Carolina over Gardner-Webb. We turn our attention now, Coach, as we open up Southern Conference play. But before we talk about the ETSU Buccaneers, let's talk about the venue as we head up to Bristol Motor Speedway. How do you contain the emotions of the guys? Obviously, one week removed from setting a national record for attendance at a college football game. Our team, ETSU, going into that same venue. The iconic Bristol Motor Speedway. The last great coliseum. The world's fastest half mile. Whatever you call it. It's going to be pretty exciting. How do you control their emotions, or maybe more importantly, how do you control your emotions? <laughs> well, it's Bristol, baby, as the commercial says. But it's a great uh, venue to play in. And I've told the guys they will appreciate it more as their life goes on because, uh, you know, this will be something they'll remember the rest of their lives, whether you like NASCAR or not. It's a great venue to go play college football, and, and we're going to get to be a part of that. You know, and everybody in the country um, who saw the game last week are going to want to know what's going on at Bristol this week. So I think we'll get a, na a lot of national attention out of this ball game. It, you know, it's great to be welcoming East Tennessee State back to the uh, Southern Conference. Just to you know, we'll be in that conversation in ETSU history for a long time. You know the first team that they played uh, coming back, and and so there's just a lot of uh, great things about going and playing in this venue. And it, you know, I recorded the game because uh, you know we were playing, but uh, what what a great job Bristol Motor Speedway did with that Tennessee Virginia Tech game. It was a um, you know it had a Super Bowl or a national championship uh, feel to it with with the, with the crowd and the pregame and all. And, you know, our guys are excited to go play, but once the ball is kicked off, it's going to be between those white lines out there. We're going to forget about all the concrete. And, uh, you know, and this week our whole attention, um, you know, is about East Tennessee State and, and what it's going to take to beat uh, a good football team that's coming off a, a big win against Kennesaw State. But it's going to be fun and fun for me. Everybody knows I'm a big NASCAR fan. I got a text the other day. He said, uh, they're not worried about the team. They're worried about me being distracted, looking for Dale Jr. all over the place. But, uh, but at the end of the day, it, it'll be a great event. But uh, we, you know, we got to focus our attention on East Tennessee State. Well, how important is that rivalry with ETSU coming back into the Southern Conference after 13 plus years of being gone? First football game back in the Southern Conference. How how important is this rivalry for for Western Carolina as we look at the ETSU Bucks? Well, you know, your next game is your biggest rivalry, so that's East Tennessee State right now, and. Uh, you know, it, it's good to have them back in the, in the proximity of the two campuses. We've got a lot of alums and boosters and, and uh, high school, um, you know, players that, uh, that know each other. You know, and that's always good when, uh, you know, your, your boosters work together and, and, and interact so that you get bragging rights for a year. And, and uh, you know, we, we both are very uh, centrally located towards Asheville, North Carolina. And so uh, I just think it's, a, it's great having them back in. And, and uh, when, when, you, when we lose our national rivalry, which was Appalachian State, um, you know, East Tennessee becomes our closest school as far as distance. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just it's fun to have schools that are close by to create those natural uh, rivalries. And, you know, Coach Torbush is a good friend. I've uh, known him since 1991, uh, but uh, and a good football coach with a great staff. But, you know, as good as friends as we are, we both want to beat each other's butts on, on Saturday afternoon, and, and, uh, and it'll be a great, great day for college football. 
you talk about ETSU coming in after a 2-9 and nine season a year ago. You mentioned their season opening victory in Idle Week last week, but a big win for them and FCS National Team of the Week after that win over Kennesaw State in double overtime to open up their year. What have you seen from that ball game out of ETSU and the improvements that they've made from, from year one to year two? Well, the improvements from year one to year two are, are extremely noticeable. They, uh, they've got good players, number one. Um, they they uh, shut down a, a very, very good Kennesaw State team. They run that double, Kennesaw State runs that double slot, just like Citadel and Georgia Southern of old. Um, and, and Kennesaw's got some outstanding athletes, and, and they did a great job on defense. Uh, Coach Billy Taylor, who's a, another friend, uh, does an outstanding job on defense side of the ball. And uh, to be able to uh, limit Kennesaw State's offense like they did, um, number one, they're dis that shows their discipline on defense, but also it shows that they got good speed and that uh, they're a tough bunch. You can tell they, they play hard and, and they physically, um, you know, on film look good offensively. Uh, it all starts with their quarterback. He's got an outstanding arm, great zip on it. He throws a good deep ball um, and, and manages and operates that offense uh, extremely well. The tailback is very quick, hard to tackle um, with good speed. And they got, you know, uh, they've got some playmakers out at wide receiver. And, and you know, for a, such a young program uh, to go on the road at Kennesaw State against a team that's had some big wins last year and to go into overtime like they did, you know, they could have very easily spit the bed out and, uh, you know, just said, hey, well, we did good, you know, coming from where we were last year. But, no, they went down there to win, and that's what they did. So uh, they've had a week off to get healed up and uh, an extra week to prepare for us. So uh, we're, we're expecting – uh, a great football team to come out, you know, with the tunnel there at Bristol. We know we're going to have to play our best football. We can't play uh, sloppy and have some of the penalties that we did last week or we'll get beat. Coach, overall, you look at ETSU and obviously the big rivalry game, all the emotions leading up to it. When you mentioned the ball being kicked off. It all comes down to football between the wide lines. And what are you looking at of this weekend's game? What, are your, what does your team have to do to get, a, get the victory in this season opener? Well, we, we cannot have the penalties we have. We go down in the red zone last week and have two false starts um, that uh, set us back. We're, we're, we had a third one get set back third and six and then miss a field goal. You, you know, we go down to the red zone um, three times and come away with zero points. You can't do that and expect to win a championship or beat a good football team like East Tennessee State. So uh, the, the penalties were the biggest. I, I didn't think we played very well in the special teams. I, uh, probably our poorest special teams outing in a long, long time. We have to uh, get our special teams back uh, to championship form. We're going to uh, be working on that big time this week. And a lot of it is, is us just – uh, we show in, the, in our first two ball games, even at the East Carolina game, when, when we're executing at a high level and just doing our job, our 111, um, and not beating ourselves, they, they we're a pretty good football team. But that consistency has to be there uh, for an entire ball game. If we do that, uh, you know, take care of the ball. You know, we had three turnovers last week. Cannot do that. Um, you know, it's more about us, really, than it is East Tennessee State. We have to uh, play a lot more discipline and clean um, between penalties, kicking game, and taking care of the football. And then on defense, if we tackle well and, and get some pressure on their quarterback, uh, you know, I think that's what it's going to take for us to, to, to win this ball game Saturday. Coach, obviously, uh, uh, in theory, a neutral site playing at the Bristol Motor Speedway for ETSU. All of their games, theoretically, until they get the new stadium built, is our road games. So then they're used to and accustomed to traveling like this. But what are you looking for out of the Catamount Nation? Obviously, it's going to be a big sea of blue and gold there. I'd like to throw a little smattering of purple and gold in there as well. Well, we're expecting a big crowd. I think it's uh, you know our student bodies. They were so awesome last week at Gardner Webb. I mean, our student body. I don't know the. They came out like they did last week, and, and we hope that certainly continues because that was awesome, and, the, and our team felt that energy. And Bristol's just you know two hours up the road uh, here from Cullowee, and 
and, and I'm expecting a lot of student body of our student body to be there. But uh, you know, we we, we got to uh, asking and, and pleading for the, the Catamount Nation to show up in full force. You know, again, for for the Catamount Nation, not only as I tell our team, uh, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity for our fans to be able to go. Uh, watch a football game at Bristol Motor Speedway and to be a part of uh, that kind of venue and, and uh, to, to say you were there, to get a t-shirt to say I was at Bristol and uh, to be a part of that. So I think it's great for college football. I think it's great for both our programs and, and our fans. Uh, it'll be a game that, that fans will remember the rest of their life. Coach, you're racking up quite a few good stadiums here. Kyle Field at Texas A&M last year, Neyland Stadium a year ago as well. You've played at Bryant-Denny, but I don't know if it really all compares to what you're going to see there at the Bristol Motor Speedway. Well, you know, I've, I've been there a lot to see NASCAR races. I've told everybody this is a this Saturday couldn't get any better for me, NASCAR and football all in one uh, one event. But, uh, it, yeah, it's, we, we've been fortunate here to um, be in a lot of great places and, not looking ahead, but next year even going to Hawaii. So, uh, you know, we're getting all the bucket list places knocked off. And, but that, that's part of the student athlete experience, you know, that you're going to go off to college and, and, and these young men that a lot of them have never been out of their hometown very much are, are getting to go experience uh, some of the greatest venues in American uh, sports, you know, history. And, and this is ranks right up there to, you know, at the top with, with all of them. So we'll get there early. We'll take in all the sights and sounds at our Bristol Motor Speedway and look forward to the Southern Conference opener in Western Carolina against the ETSU. A 1.30 kick. You can hear the game on the Catamount Sports Network. You can watch the game on the SoCon Digital Network, CSN Airtime of 12.30. For the coach, I'm Daniel Looker saying so long for now on this week of Catamount Football Weekly.